Hi, this is Chris Cumnock for Vike TV Playoff Edition Week 1. I'm here with high school football guru David McNabb. David, are you ready to talk 4A and 5A football? Uh, I'm ready to talk. That's why I went to about 30 games through uh, since uh, August, uh, covering Thursday, Friday, and Saturday uh, games, and uh, been the doubleheaders and tripleheaders, and now we're in the playoff doubleheaders and tripleheaders, and I get to go to you know small towns and neutral sites and uh, see all the stories unfold. See all the good teams. Well, speaking of good teams, let's start out 5A Division One. Give me some teams that, that you've seen that, that you're looking forward to seeing in, in the playoffs that you feel like have a chance to do something. Well, a 5A Division One, that's the, 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 the most well-known division, and that's where most a lot of the teams that people in Texas have heard about. Allen, DeSoto, uh, particularly up Capel. in this area, area Capel's really good. Uh, and they'll all be battling there in uh, their own little region, so they'll be playing each other very quickly. Euless Trinity's in that division, so that's where a lot of people sort of think but there's a, a lot of action, and just getting to the state semifinal out of that region is sort of a championship in itself. Absolutely. I look at DeSoto, and, and I look at Allen and DeSoto, and I see the same animal there, but but in terms of everyone assumes that they'll, that they'll eventually meet up, and, and, and probably they will. For DeSoto, I see their biggest challenge in getting to Allen is being Capel, and for Allen, I see that being Skyline. You agree with that? I, th I think that'll be the way it'll, it'll play out. I would not uh, underestimate Capel. They, I saw them in their season opener, and they beat Longview in the Tom, Tom Landry, Landry Classic. Classic right? So what that and what that showed me, Longview's gone on, and they're a pretty monster team. Right. So now they didn't have their big tackle, Zakavon uh, Henderson. He was right. hurt, and and the way Capel runs the ball, that was a big factor in the game. Correct. Right. But Capel's got some players, uh, Trey Parker, Gavin McDaniel, who are the best return duo in the, in the state. There can't be any better. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen everybody, but I've seen them over the years, and there can't be anybody better than those guys. So uh, Capel, I'm a little bit worried. They don't have uh, – everybody remembers the story of Jacob Logan, who died tragically last year. And what he was was the dynamic – you know, Julio Jones receiver that when you threw it, um, Hail Mary, it may actually work. Right. Uh, and they don't have that kind of kid, and, and that's what they lost with Jacob last year. Yeah, and I think their formula, particularly against a team like DeSoto, they've got that big offensive line, they've, they've got two kids that can really run the ball, and, and Daniel and West, and I think their formula is going to have to be, we're going to load up, and we're going to run it, and we're going to make you put eight, nine guys in the box, and then we'll throw it. And that would work well against DeSoto if you can pull that off because it keeps their offense off the field as well. And and the flip side of that is DeSoto killed them last year. Now, right. now there was a lot of the, the tragedy, and I, I saw Coppell play in the first round against Irving MacArthur, which is a nice team, sure. but you could tell it, 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 Coppell was mentally exhausted. To have a, a, you know, a student, a friend, you know, pass away, die during the middle of the season, that they, they looked very tired, and then they went to play DeSoto. The odd thing about DeSoto is I think everyone thought, boy, they're losing Dontre Wilson, and he was clearly the 30-touchdown guy, right. but they, they almost depended too heavily on him last year, and he was only 185 pounds, and you could tell toward the end of the year that little he burst, yeah. he wore down a little bit. But now they've taken on this whole new personality with uh, Des White, and he can do things uh, as the running quarterback. He's improved his passing just enough, they've, and they've got a, a, some really good receivers. Chris Lacey's a great receiver. So I think DeSoto's actually a little more balanced. I think there are two, and you know they have five receivers that, that average over two catches a game. So like you said, if, if you want to commit a lot of guys in the box and say we're not going to let you run the football, they're, they're more than capable of throwing it down the field this year. But the thing that would concern me a little bit as they go further and play the Allens of the world is they commit a lot of penalties. They average nine penalties a game this year, and they're going to have to clean that up in the playoffs for, I mean, to be able to get past an Allen and, and potential teams down the road like going to Park North Shore and Harlingen and people like that. 
But it's, it's certainly nice to, to have a quarterback like that. And I think for somebody to beat them, and I've said this all year, you're going to have to have a quarterback that, that can, can kind of match that because they're like a video game. And I think that's where Allen comes in because Kyler Murray is that guy. He can do the same thing. He's a dual threat. He's got weapons around him as well. I know you've seen Allen a couple times this year. I, I've seen Allen play a, a lot last year, a couple times this year. Uh, you know, and I know as soon as you have somebody like Johnny Manziel, everybody's going, oh, this kid's the next Johnny Manziel. Uh, I wouldn't call Kyler Murray Johnny Manziel. They're a little different. I would call Kyler Murray Russell Wilson. I mean, uh, in fact, I've talked to a lot of college coaches, and, you know, they get into traits, and it's very detailed. Russell Wilson was a second baseman. He was the leader on the baseball team. Kyler Murray, second baseman, leader on the uh, base, uh, baseball team. Uh, they... But where Kyler, he made a run against Plano the other night where if you saw the Cotton Bowl and Johnny Mandel kind of broke down the left sideline and then he almost tiptoed danced. It was like everybody on Oklahoma, which is still Oklahoma, was going in slow motion. And he was like picking his way through there and just kind of skipped in and the other guy, and then it sped up as soon as he was in the end zone. Uh, it was a play exactly like that. And that is a physical rarity. You just don't see somebody that the game for them is moving so slow, you see how slow it's moving for him, that he's like lifting his leg around guys sweeping their arms sure. at him. So that factor, the uh, it's the rest of the offense at Allen that I'm worried about. Uh, they don't have a big speed running, but he's their leading rusher. Right. Uh, they've got some nice receivers, but that's only because the defensive backs are constantly looking back looking to the huddle yeah. to see if Kyler's taken off. Uh, their defense is very, very good at, at Allen. So, and, and they, for a methodical team, they have the avalanche factor. You know, like you see, and I, you know, you mix uh, leagues, but like when the New Orleans Saints that avalanche, right. Once it starts. Allen, yeah. DeSoto have, have that, whereas a Capel doesn't. They don't have that. The game is over in six minutes. Skyline has that avalanche factor where you're playing them pretty close. We're playing the feet off. You know, we're playing them off their feet. We're going really well. And then all of a sudden, they're 21 points ahead. Absolutely. Well, and I think when you look at it, and it's, it's eerie how similar these two teams are, but I think if you take Kyler and Dez out of the mix, I think DeSoto's offense much more explosive than Allen's. Allen's a little more methodical. But I do think Allen's defense is at least a tick better than, than DeSoto's defense to me. I, I think that's that's true. I, w I would agree with that for this year. I think uh, that's that's going to be true. And don't forget, South Lake Carroll's coming out of that district. You've got Trinity now. They're, Skyline. they're and Skylines in there, which is you know why everyone talks so much about that region. Uh, and if uh, you know Kyler missed a game, I think a bruised foot, you right. know, sort of thing. And I saw him against Plano, and I saw him warm up. Boy, there was there was no tender. I mean, you could have never whatever the the deepness of the bruise or whatever. Uh, it, it had it had no effect on him right. at all. 